Welcome back to Blender Daily. In today's tutorial, I want to share 10 valuable tips and shortcuts every Blender user should know. Let's get started. In this first tip, I want to share a very handy shortcut that I use all the time when working with Blender. If you hold down Ctrl and press any number on your keyboard, so for example Ctrl 3, it will immediately add a subdivision surface modifier with the corresponding level of subdivisions in the viewport. So for example I can press Ctrl 1 to quickly bring this down to one subdivision or press Ctrl 5 to bring this up to five subdivisions. I think this is extremely useful as it is a lot faster than going in here to add modifier and then choose the subdivision surface modifier which is probably the most used modifier in Blender. So now let's bring this back down to Ctrl 3 and then right click in order to enable smooth shading. Now this shortcut will only affect the viewport level and if you want to use the same level for the render you have to adjust this manually in the modifier properties. In Blender we have two different shortcuts to duplicate an object. We can use Shift D to duplicate or Alt D to create a linked duplicate. At first both of them seem to do the same thing. However, if I select original mesh and tab into edit mode, you can see that any changes that I make in here will also be updated on the linked duplicate. This is because they share the same mesh data. If we create regular duplicates, it will use a lot of memory and the scene will become extremely slow. If we use linked duplicates on the other hand, we can save a lot of memory because the objects are sharing the same mesh data. Therefore, we can create a lot more duplicates without the scene becoming slow. And additionally, it can be extremely useful to be able to edit only one object and all the other will be updated immediately. Here's a shortcut that you need to know when working with cameras in Blender. The shortcut Ctrl Alt Numpad 0 will quickly place the camera wherever your current view is. This makes placing the camera a lot more intuitive and fun. Once the camera is roughly placed, you can press N to open up the side panel and under View, enable Lock Camera to View. Now you can move around in the 3D viewport and the camera will follow along. This is perfect to make further adjustments and place the camera in a very intuitive way. Once you are happy with the placement, press N again and disable lock camera to view so that it will stay in place. And by the way, you can always use numpad 0 to quickly switch between the camera view. Another useful Blender feature that I really like are the quick favorites. So let me just demonstrate this on this lock camera to view option that I just showed you. We can right click on this and add it to the quick favorites. Now in order to access this option, you just need to press Q and here we get the lock camera to view option. Then just replace the camera, press Q again and disable it. I recommend you to add all the features that you use on a regular basis to the quick favorites so you can access them at any time just by pressing Q. This is a lot faster than always searching through menus in Blender. And an instance where I use it all the time in Blender is in the shader editor. So let's just create a new material. And when I press Q in here, you can see that I can quickly add in the notes that I use all the time. So whenever I need to add a color ramp, I just press Q and choose the color ramp. In order to add notes to your quick favorites menu, just press Shift A Go to the note that you want to add, then right click on it and choose add to quick favorites. Now you can just press Q and add in the diffuse shader. I highly recommend you to set up your quick favorites as it can really improve your workflow. Alright, so here I have this very simple scene with just a UV sphere and a monkey head. The monkey already has a simple deform modifier and the wireframe modifier. Let's say I want to copy those modifiers to the UV sphere as well. 
This is really easy to do. First select the UV sphere and then shift click on the monkey head. Then use the shortcut control L and here we have this copy modifiers option. Click on it and now the sphere has the same modifier stack as our monkey. And if we switch to the shader editor, you can see that I already applied a material to our sphere. Now let's copy this material to the monkey as well. And the process to do this is exactly the same as copying modifiers. First select the monkey, shift click on our sphere, press Ctrl L and this time we're going to choose link materials. And now both of those objects share the same shader. In this tip I want to share two simple ways to copy colors from one field to another. Now I've seen a lot of people go in here, then go to the hex code, copy this with Ctrl C, then go to the other color field and paste the color. Now this definitely works, however it can be a lot easier. The first option is to just hover over the color, press Ctrl C to copy, then hover over the other field and Ctrl V to paste. But it can be even easier than that. Just take a color and drag and drop it into the field where you want to paste it. This is a lot faster and more intuitive than copying the color code. When working in Blender we are often switching between the different editor types. So for example we go to the shader editor to work on our materials, then we switch to the graph editor to do some animation and maybe we also need to do some UV editing. Therefore I think it can be really valuable to learn the shortcuts for those editors. You can find them in this menu directly next to them. So for example I can use shift F3 to quickly get to the shader editor, shift F6 for the graph editor or shift F10 for the image editor. I memorized just the ones I use all the time and it really improved my workflow. So let's press shift F5 to get back to the 3D view. In Blender we have a few default HDRIs to choose from. I think they are great to quickly take a look at our scene in different light conditions. In this tip I want to show you how you can add your own HDRIs to this selection. For this I went to polyhaven.com and downloaded two environment textures that I liked. Now in order to add them to our preview selection, click on the settings button and under HDRIs click on install. Go to the folder where you saved them, select the ones you want to import and choose install light. Now they are available in our preview selection. I think this is a great feature to quickly preview our scene in different lighting conditions. For the last tip let's have a bit of fun and add a simple explosion to our monkey head. For this make sure you have the monkey selected, go to the frame where you want it to explode, then go up here to object and on the quick effects choose quick explode. This will add a particle system and an explode modifier to our object. Then let's go back a few frames, press play and the monkey will explode exactly on the frame we set before. Now this is of course not the best explosion, but we can further customize it in the particle properties. For example you can change the number of pieces it should create when the monkey explodes. This video is sponsored by Rendero. They provide high performance cloud computers for creative users just like you. Their virtual computers are easy to connect to and extremely stable. Rendero is perfect for rendering and other intensive 3D work on their powerful machines. This is a great solution if you feel like your hardware is holding you back but you can't afford to upgrade your setup. I've previously used their service for my projects and I am genuinely happy with it. I highly recommend you to give it a try. Learn more about it on rendero.com. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments down below which tip was the most useful to you. I am Nick from Blender Daily. See you in the next one.